In this video I'm going to install the components for the CNC controller onto the backing plate. This will include the Gratus M1 Pro control board by Panacat, an 8 channel opto isolated relay module and two 12 terminal barrier blocks. I've already wired the components together, paying particular attention to getting the right combination of wiring to settings on the firmware, so that if peripheries were not in place, actions would not occur. For example, if the hold fee button, which also acts as the door safety switch, was not in place, the controller would alarm. I'm using the standoff with the threaded bit facing upwards, securing with a machine screw and split washer through the galvanized plate. I fit one component at a time, removing the parts before drilling the next set of holes. So I've got my M2.5 standoff, so I'm going to go with some small ones for the first layer and then I'm going to have to double a few up and get the second layer. If I need to buy a nut spinner. The second layer will hold a four channel relay module which I'll connect to the spindle enabled terminal on the controller. This will allow me to control the hand router, turning it on and off with the M3 and M5 commands. I want to have the option to use one in case I decide not to use a dedicated frequency drive and spindle. The other channels could be for the flood and mist enable or I could connect up some LED lights to illuminate the machine at different states. Red while cutting for example and white for idle. I'm finishing off installing the first layer of components using larger M4 machine screws to secure the barrier block with the one closest to the relay module raised to give me clearance to connect wires. So I'm using a couple of nylon spacers for this raised section here. I haven't really explained what I've done with the connections as I don't think these will translate to video easily so what I will do is provide an illustrative diagram as well as a copy of my amended firmware as a downloadable link on the Patreon post to this video. But for those of you who don't want to venture too far from the relative safety of YouTube, this is a rough non-technical sketch of the limit switches and control input connections. As I mentioned previously, I wanted to utilize fail safes into the control box design so actions wouldn't occur if parts, for example, rattled themselves loose or failed. This process took a while and I don't think I've entirely cracked it, as there's still some scenarios which might cause problems, but this controller feels safer than any I've built before. Alongside the physical layer I had to edit the firmware somewhat and I wrote what I had done down as a workflow in a text document because I have the memory of a goldfish. Anyway, if you want to understand technically what I've done, I suggest you read the accompanying article on my website www.misspro.com. There will also be a section there about uploading the bootloader on the Gradus M1 Pro control board, which I had to do to increase the space available to upload the amended Gerbil firmware. So this is the Gradus M1 Pro here, then I've got an 8 channel relay module board which has opto couplers, or opto isolators along there, and I also have this set to active high, it's 24 volts, these are the barrier blocks which interface between the switches and the limit switches and the buttons. I've got 24 volts coming in, being separated to where it's needed essentially. And uh, then the power that will come in for the control board and that's going to go to the 36 uh, volts DC. And just cable tie that along the front there just to make it a little bit neater. So it looks pretty neat. Probably could have shifted this a little bit further that way. Uh, but the main thing is that all the terminals are accessible here, I can tighten them up if I need to, uh, and then these will go off to the various stages. Okay, that looks good. I'll just quickly mention about setting up the stepper drivers. I'm planning to use 1 16th steps on my BSD 109A Bigfoot drivers, which you set with the jumpers on the drivers themselves. I'll be using them with NEMA 23 1.16 Newton meter 1.5 amp 4 wire stepper motors from OMC Stepper Online. And for these to work, I'll need to set the voltage reference by adjusting the trim pot on the individual drivers. The VREF can be worked out by dividing the current limit by 2, in my case 
1.5 amps divided by 2 is 0.75 and this can be measured on the driver with a voltmeter by holding the positive lead to the crown of the trim pot or another voltage jumper pin and placing the ground lead to any ground pin on the controller. And turn it off from the switch. And I'll turn it back on. Power doesn't come on. To line up the hex standoffs to the upper level, I began by trying to trace the layout on a piece of paper and then realizing that was a waste of time and that I could use Fusion 360 to simply triangulate the position between the known layout openings of the Gradius controller board and the eight channel relay module. I'll just show you what I drew up on the software. I know the layout of the four individual holes on the control board and the relay modules and within the software I was able to input and specify the specific measurements from the top left to the top right hex standoffs and from the bottom left to the bottom right which automatically adjusted the shape so all the parts lined up assuming that I made the original holes square which I tried to do. So there's no need for me to do any maths which is probably how society as we know it ends. Someone decided they didn't need to do maths. While that prints, I'm going to make the holes for the buttons. These buttons were by far the cheapest of the 24 volt LED backlit variety that I could find. They're not great, but for low DC voltage applications, I think they'll do. I'm just going to place the parts back into the box just to double check that they're not going to whack into anything. After laying out and trying to imagine that once placed parts wouldn't conflict with one another, I used my step drill to make the 16mm openings which would mount them. I have four switches at the front, the red will connect to the controller hard stop, the blue will connect to the gerbil reset or soft stop terminal, yellow or amber to the hold feed and green is for resume and start. Huzzah! The 3D print is complete and I can test the fit. I'm using a pipe deburrer tool to remove the brim from the print. It looks okay but I think I'll later make this out of a galvanized metal sheet which I can ground. A metal backing plate as opposed to a plastic one can conduct electricity and should help with draining and shielding parts from electromagnetic interference. I'll carry on with the buttons. I first wired up the onboard LED lights over so notice the labels on some of the terminals were back to front. This meant that when I initially test wired all the LEDs in series only half turned on. They all turned on there because I resolved the issue and once I was happy with the test wiring I made this permanent by soldering the connections onto the buttons and using heat shrink to cover any exposed ends. Okay, I'm now going to wire up the individual buttons to the terminals. I didn't film this, but I will describe these connections. Now use your imagination. The hard stop goes to the normally closed terminal on the button, cycle start resume to normally open, and the hold feed and reset to normally closed. Don't trust this footage as exactly correct. I miswired the cycle start to the normally closed terminal, so its relay module light is on in this shot, and that should be off. This wiring setup causes a conflict in the software. I also wired the hard stop to the normally open terminal on the relay by accident. This meant the controller was in a perpetual state of alarm. It will need counselling before being able to connect to the CNC software. And later what I will do is wire to the hold feed so that a switch comes out of the enclosure and then will be connected to a enclosure for the actual CNC machine. Oh yeah, later I will build an enclosure and wire the door to the hold feed switch. There are some settings in the firmware which turn off and park the spindle at a safe machine position when the hold feed button or door switch are activated. In my notes for this video I wrote maybe show the settings in notepad++. I just uh, screwed the fan onto this piece of uh, 3D printed plastic that's going to act as the next layer. I also added the four channel relay module and a couple extra uh, hex standoffs which will eventually hold the Raspberry Pi. 
These are going to the relays, although I'm not going to use the flood and mist at the moment. I uh, just want the option of having those there and available. I'm now drilling the openings for the glands, which will secure the cables from the stepper motors and limit switches. Okay, there's still a few holes that I want to make in the box for the VFD a switch for the laser signal but I've done the switches and I've got the glands on the opposite side over here for the stepper motors. I'm jumping ahead now wiring the cables through the glands. My stepper motors have four wires so they are bipolar with two motor windings. To wire up your steppers you will need to identify the pair of wires for each of those windings and I did this by simply holding two of the exposed wire ends together while trying to turn the motor sharp. If it resists movement then you've identified the pair for one of the motor windings. I wired one pair to A1 and A2 and the other to B1 and B2 on the control board. My Y axis uses two stepper motors so I need to make sure those are wired identically. And later, when I turn the machine on for the first time before homing, I'll jog the machine a few millimetres to make sure the axes are moving in the right direction. If they are not, I'll swap one pair of the wires around in the terminal on the control board. I wanted to get this thing moving, and hopefully it doesn't make any future work to the electrical box too fiddly. Using glands helps reduce breaking the shielding or screening around the core wires, but it also prevents dismantling the machine from the controller. I checked the limit proximity sensors work correctly, looking out for the LED turning on and the relay module switching when the sensor comes into contact with metal, a precision screwdriver in this case. I run into a little trouble getting the machine moving and it turned out to be something very simple. Okay, I've got it moving. Um, it was something quite simple which I had overlooked. It was the hard reset which was wired into the normally open terminals on the relay. Start with the hard. Stop. Soft stop. Okay, I miswired the resume start button, which should have gone to the normally open terminals on the rear of the switch. I just didn't pay attention to my notes, but it was a quick fix. I can now show you all the buttons working. Okay, I'm now going to just show you the buttons working while this is performing a test uh, movement from a G-code file. I'm going to start by pressing the hold feed button. That stops the machine and then slowly moves the Z-axis up to a safe parking position. If you imagine this was a door that was open, that's the last action that would occur. When the door is closed, you then press the cycle resume, which is the screen button. That brings the spindle down and there'll be a dwell for a few seconds while the spindle turns on, four seconds possibly, and then it plunges down and carries on. Now, this is an emergency, I press the blue button and it's going to suddenly stop. And I'm not able to resume from this, I have to physically go to the software and reset it. <laughs> I think my uh, rapid speed is too fast to set to a thousand millimeters a minute. I didn't get a chance to explain the difference between the red hard stop and blue soft stop buttons, but what I've now noticed is that the hard stop will reset the machine position, which means I'd have to rehome after pressing so that the work positions are referenced from the right starting point, and the soft stop may result in the work position resetting if, for example, I'd used a G92 command to offset an axis. 
The resetting of the axis work position is something that I've noticed and has annoyed me for quite some time and was probably the straw which broke the camel's back so to speak, starting me on my journey into building CNC machines. And simply put, the G92 position register or set position command will reset if a M30 command is executed at the end of a G-code job or if the Gerbil soft stop is pressed. This will affect restarting jobs and instead of G92 it is recommended to use a G10 set tool offset or programmable data input command. Now I've got that off my chest. I still have a lot of fiddling to do to the firmware but I'll save that for another time. What I'll try now is to cut the galvanized plate for the second layer of components and I've got to do this the old fashioned way with my trusty pillar drill or hole making machine. Wipe this down with a bit of methylated spirit. So this is where I'll leave the control box for now. I still have to wire and install the stationary probing button as well as the outputs for the controller. So there'll be more videos to come. But what I'll do for this video is provide a link with a more descriptive article explaining the physical connections and firmware changes which I'll provide in the description below. And finally, it's probably a good time to mention that I'll be attending Maker Central this year. Last year I went as a guest, this year I'll be sharing a store with Nathan from Opentronics, or now Blinken Lights, where he'll have bought his synthesizers with him, and I'll have bought this machine in a more complete state than what you see it now. So look out for us on the 11th and 12th of May 2019 at Maker Central in the Thunderbird hangars of the Birmingham NEC.